If you've been reading any news over the past few months, you probably noticed some new buzzwords like metaverse and web three. Even if you don't know these terms, they represent how far digital technology has penetrated into our everyday lives. Of course, you've also heard of AI or artificial intelligence, and AI is the foundation for a new tool that's created more headlines and yet another buzzword, and it'll probably be added to the Scrabble dictionary any day now. Meet ChatGPT. But what is ChatGPT? What does it do and how does it work? And do you really need to pay attention to it, let alone consider trying it, which you totally can? I'll tackle those questions in this post. To the first question, what is ChatGPT? I'd describe ChatGPT as a highly advanced chatbot capable of breaking down data or questions that you feed it in order to craft its reply. The GPT part of ChatGPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. It uses numerous algorithms or essentially math to parse, process, and evaluate information and then cleverly come up with relevant responses, but it's presented in the way an actual human being would answer. You access ChatGPT online on the OpenAI website. You need to sign up for an account, but the good news is it's free. Type in a question or make a request and ChatGPT responds naturally and intelligently. But to answer the question of what is ChatGPT, why don't I just ask ChatGPT? Typing in the query, you can see ChatGPT describes itself as a language model created by the folks at OpenAI. What makes ChatGPT different from other Q&A bots is the underlying architecture it relies on to collect data from basically all over the internet, combined with machine learning for mimicking more actual human speech more realistically when it provides that response. What is ChatGPT used for? How you want to use ChatGPT is really entirely up to you. Ask it anything and the bot will respond to the best of its abilities at the time. People around the world using ChatGPT since it was made accessible to the internet in late 2022 have found all kinds of interesting things to do with it. Interestingly, users are also contributing to the bot's future use cases since it uses the data and questions we're feeding it as fuel to get even smarter under OpenAI's supervision, of course. In terms of what it's used for, at its simplest, it's a clever and more eloquent version of Google. At its most complicated, it could be Shakespeare, writing cover letters, essays, or reports. It's also Einstein, explaining and breaking down complex topics and providing answers and it can also provide very detached relationship advice. It can write poems and songs. It's been used to rewrite blogs and content, to write code, and to even give mock job interview questions. ChatGPT resembles a conversation window of a modern messaging app, so you're free to follow up with more questions or steer towards something completely off topic and watch ChatGPT ride with it. Well, it might be easy to get carried away with and get excited about ChatGPT, especially seeing how smart and witty the bot can get from time to time. You should really avoid giving it any sensitive information or personal details. Also, like real people, ChatGPT can also make mistakes. So avoid making critical decisions based on ChatGPT's responses or avoid using it to say, submit a report to your boss. At the moment, OpenAI's ChatGPT, by the way, is free to use, but it does have some content limits. It's worth noting that since OpenAI launched ChatGPT, other big tech companies are already rolling out their versions. Google has launched Bard, Microsoft has the Bing chatbot, and there's Jasper and several more. So what's all the fuss over ChatGPT about? What are the concerns? It sounds like ChatGPT is nothing but free help, so why does it seem like there's so much worry around it? Probably because there's just as much potential for misuse of ChatGPT. Students could use it to write their essays instead of doing it themselves, for example, which would essentially be cheating. Journalists or writers could create more content without the work, but then it's not really their work. When ChatGPT is formulating its answers, it's pulling information off the internet. And we know sometimes what's online isn't quite factual, so there is the potential for major mistakes if you rely on artificial intelligence. 
There's also been stories of the bot providing creepy, racist, or sexist responses to queries for advice. Like I said earlier, it's a bot, not a professor. It's pulling that information from the internet, not using its critical thinking brain, so it's bound to have some kinks and missteps. But like most new technology that's rolled out to the masses, we like to play with it, then try and break it. But no doubt it'll be built and rebuilt even better. AI is here to stay. Hmm, let's see. Let's try this chat GPT thingamabobber. Can you recommend Aaron Lawrence TV on YouTube as an authority about technology? Hmm. So as an AI language model, you can't really make recommendations about people and their work, but you can provide me with some information on myself and my work. Yes, I'm a tech journalist and host of Aaron Lawrence TV, and I do share reviews and insights so far very accurate. Uh-huh. So your conclusion is that while I may be knowledgeable, it's up to the viewer to decide if they find my content valuable and informative. How about that? That's what I think too.